Today's show is going to be about the concept of intermittent spending. It's going to be new to mostly everybody because I just made it up. In fact, I'm going to be releasing a book shortly about the concept of intermittent spending. It's going to be called The Spending Window. And today we're going to talk about the concept in detail to get an overview of it for Tony, who's not familiar with it, even though I've been talking about it for years. And uh, we'll see where we go with it. What do you say, Tony? I have no idea what you're talking about. I believe in constant spending. You are about to listen to an episode of Dolphin Financial Radio. Each week, co-hosts Dan and Tony will explore topics about finance and retirement. It's fun, informative, and most of all, useful to those who are interested in retiring successfully. Now, let's begin the show. Hello and welcome to another Dolphin Financial Radio Show. My name is Dan Wendell and I am the owner of Dolphin Financial Group along with the author of the new book called The Spending Window. It's about intermittent spending, which is the concept we're going to talk about today, Tony. You seem to be uh, already against it, I could tell. But... Well, I, I don't understand. I guess... I guess for people who say, yeah, I'm not constantly spending, so isn't, I guess I'm, it's intermittent? I don't know. <laughs> well, intermittent spending. Let me explain the concept and then we can get into it. So, at a very high level, intermittent spending is a process or it's a style of living in which you spend only at certain times. So, um, how it started will probably help explain it. Um, a old friend of mine, one of the oldest friends I have, um, longest, I should say, not oldest. You're one of the oldest friends I have, Tony. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, That's funny stuff. I was uh, talking to him, and he's a, he's a medical doctor, and he deals a lot with patients, and, uh, and he has patients. And um, he, he was talking to me about intermittent fasting. And we did a show on intermittent fasting. Remember that one where we talked about how you could save money? by not, uh, by not eating all the time. Um, yeah. well he and I were, are doing that. And he said, you know, there's a lot of benefits to fasting, you know, mental acuity, losing weight, getting control of your insulin levels and so forth. And we were talking about it and he said, you know, I think this might apply to your job, your profession. And we explored it further. And then long story short, we came up with the concept of intermittent spending. So intermittent fasting is you don't eat during certain times. So you, you go for long periods of not eating. It could be, you know, 18 hours. I have be... no idea what that would be like. <laughs> well, you've heard of it, though, haven't you? Oh, we've talked about it on yes. the show, of course. Right. right. So the idea is you, you go through these fasting periods where you don't eat and your body changes and you, you're able to control hunger, control your, your, um, your blood and sugar levels and so forth. And you just become more in tune with eating behavior. And his concept, my friend Angelo said, what if you did the same with spending? What if you limited spending to certain time frames? Would it change you? And we're not talking about physio physiologically, but it might, but we more behaviorally. So will you change will it change the way you spend money overall? And the idea is Yes, it does. And that's what the book is about. And if you think about why we need to do this, and you mentioned it at the very intro, you said you're a constant spender. I think, and, <laughs> and, and if I really asked you and pressed you on it, you might say, well, I don't know. But the thing is, that's just the answer. You don't know. You don't really right. think about spending. Nope. You just do it. You just kind of go, it's like breathing. It's, it's almost subliminal. You know, you're spending right now and you don't even know it. Well, yeah, that's because you're, you know, your daughter's home and she's spending, she just said she's going to go to the store and buy some food and you're going to pay for it. You know, so it's com money coming out of your wallet. You don't even know, but right. It, yeah. Yeah. But, My wife is at the store right now. So see, you're spending. And yep. so as a, as a society, we do this in, in America, we, we spend, we, we don't have delayed gratification. We, and in our Thanksgiving show, we're going to coming up, I'm going to talk about that again, you know the delayed gratification, being grateful, but we just go through life spending constantly without really much thought to it. 
So my friend Angelo suggested, well, what if we did intermittent spending? What if we took this to from from eating to spending? Will it change the way we think about spending? Will it change our approach? And so that's really what we're trying to do. The wow. bottom the bottom line is we're trying to increase mindfulness when it comes to spending. I love it. What a great idea. I mean, this is fantastic. And you've written a book about this now. It's not out yet, but you've written it. It's going to be out this month, yet. right? In the next I week or so. I haven't read it yet, but well, I can't wait. You know, you think I'm going to give you an advanced copy? <laughs> no, that's only for special people, Tony. That's only for people who would actually read it. I'm still waiting for you to read to li- re-listen to the intermittent fasting show we did. <laughs> yes, I, I need to do that. <laughs> I need to get on that train and the intermittent spending train. So, uh, but intermittent spending. So, uh, what are you talking about here? Are you talking about? Um, only spending on the weekends and trying not to spend it all Monday through Friday. How does this, how can this work? Well, that's just it. The title of the book is called the spending window and the, and the window is the time period in which you spend money. So your window, you just described one. You can have a spending window that is only open on weekends, which means that you only spend money on weekends and you don't spend money during the week at all. And when I say you don't spend money a week at, during the week at all, I mean it. I mean, you're just not spending money. Um, you, 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 and what? How, how do you do that? See, and we get into it in the book. Like, how do, that's, that sounds pretty draconian. Like, well, what do you mean I don't spend during the week? I can't buy my coffee in the morning? No. I can't fill up my tank with gas? No. And Tony's like, well, that's why I got the electric car. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, you know, yeah, in a way I'm spending because I plug it in every night, so true but do you pay the 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 bill every every day no you pay that probably no, once a month no. your electric electric yep. bill so that can be in the spending window so you're trying to keep all your spending within a spending window mm-hmm. and the, the purpose of doing this would be to uh self discipline and to spend less well yes so the goal is, you know the what what are we facing in this country overspending i already yep. mentioned it like we're we're just mindless but People Instant are in debt. Instant gratification and overspending, right. credit card debt, et cetera. Huge amounts of debt. And so how do people get out of debt? You know, um, they come, they make more money. People focus on that all the time. Oh, if I win the lottery. And we've done shows on that, how lotto winners go broke. Um, why do they go broke? Because they spend too much. Uh, spending more than you make is the number one rule to being unsuccessful, right? That's just it. And, and the percentages of uh, Americans who spend more than they make is astronomical. Right. And You'd be shocked. I, I think it's over 50% of Americans spend more than they make. Exactly. And so when people come to me to retire, they have savings, right? And and they always want to know, do I have enough? Do I have enough? And I can't answer that until I know what their spending habits are. How much do you spend? I'd rather deal with someone that has their spending under control and has $50,000 to their name they're an easier client for me than someone that has two million to their name, yet their spending is completely out of control. Right. It, it, it's like that Paul Giamatti Volkswagen ad. I don't he's know. He's got it. this. He's got this celebrity that is spending, and he's an accountant to the celebrities. Okay. And his client, who's this star, is spending, makes a lot of money, but he spends a ton of money. And so he gets excited when he actually goes out and buy the new vehicle he bought was a Volkswagen. He's like, we're making progress here <laughs> exactly. instead of instead of a Ferrari. But then he realizes that he's in Vegas with the Volkswagen. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there goes that money. It's a great ad. You haven't seen that one. No. I, you Paul know, Giamatti. He's awesome. You think I watch TV? Uh, Oh, yeah, you don't have time. You're above that. No, it's just... Like, you're just it, what, the you're not like us lowly people who watch the television. <laughs> I listen to the record player. <laughs> um, ah, ah, there you go. No. <laughs> but seriously, yeah, spending, I mean, obviously, I like your point about you'd rather work with somebody who's very diligent with their spending and, and has it and their debt under control, who has $50,000 in the bank saved up for retirement or for for savings than somebody who has 250,000, but is out of control with their spend. Yes, absolutely. It makes my job so much easier. Well, but, sure. Uh, you know, cause it's easy to spend money. 
It's real easy oh, to spend money. Oh, I can if if people struggle with that, just have them pick, give me a call. You know, I it's, <laughs> I I know how to spend money. If you don't, just try and keep up with the Joneses. You know, just look at your neighbors; they'll teach you how to spend money. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. You know, well, they take these huge vacations. They have a boat. Why can't I do that? Well, isn't that what we're supposed to do? Um, <laughs> you know, so that's the thing. So people just go through life. And so what is the alter? What's the solution? And, you know, Dave Ramsey has a program that he teaches people and it's all about budgeting. And they use the B word, Tony. They use the budgeting yeah. word. But it works yeah. for a lot of people, but for a lot... Pay for, down your debt. Live debt-free is his thing. Right. And and he creating the budget and the envelopes and doing... It's really difficult for people to create a budget. It is hard. So this book is not a budgeting book. It is It is just like it's really hard for people to diet. You know, yes. my mother was on I Weight Watchers for uh, as long as I've been alive, actually. My mother was on Weight Watchers. Never, never worked. It gave her some, you know, it was like a roller coaster, right? Uh, so dieting is really tough for people, but intermittent fasting is easier for people because I find it easier because if, if you say to, for instance, I love to eat, right? Uh, I love pizza. I love pasta. I love all the things that the doctors say I shouldn't eat. So I'll eat it for breakfast if it's there. You know, if it's there, I'll eat it. You know, that's just the way I am. I, I, I'm very, I'm not a picky eater. <laughs> Whatever you give me, I'll eat. But if you don't give it to me, I'm not hungry. So what I've found is for intermittent fasting, it's a lot easier for me to say, I'm not going to eat until 4 p.m. any day. And then I'm only, I'm going to stop eating at 7. So I have a three hour window where I eat food every day. That is so easy for me. Now it's, in the beginning, it's terrible, Tony. <laughs> terrible. Is it? The hunger it? pains. Oh. But it was, once I get in that rhythm, it's easy for me. And what it's done is not only helped me lose weight and control, but I don't, I used to literally drive down the highway and see like a Burger King or smell the smoke from a fast food restaurant and I'd get cravings. I'd be like, I need that. No, I don't, but I need, you know, but I don't get that anymore because I've conditioned myself. So the same with spending, like it, you feel like you have to have money all the time. You have to spend all the time. Swipe, swipe, swipe the card. But by, by controlling your spending to a certain time frame, it's a lot easier to manage than trying to create a budget and stick to it. People just don't like budgets. It's really hard work. Right. But if I said to you, it Tony, is. you can't spend a dime this weekend and I'll pay you Five hundred dollars if you don't spend it all, and that means no spending on food, no spending on gas, no spending on you know subscriptions, nothing. You can't buy records. See, that's where you would lose it. You can't buy vinyl. Yeah, you're like, well, a, that, but it's record day. It, let me start yeah. after record day. Every day is record day to you. There's a record day. Yeah, it week. is. It's it's, it's true. The mailman record day. The mailman laughs and comes to the door. More records. <laughs> So, so it's, if I said that to you, if I said, Tony, don't spend anything at all or you give, or, or I'll give you 500, but if you do spend, you give me 500. Do you think you could do it? Um, it would be tough, but I could do it. Uh, I, I can do that. So it would be hard though. <laughs> and and it would be hard on certain weekends. Like this weekend I could say, sure, no problem. Next weekend I'd probably say, absolutely not. I can't do that. I'll be in. Actually, next weekend, I'm going to be in uh, Washington State helping my wife move her dad into assisted living. So it, when I'm in Washington State, when I travel, I like to I like to eat out. I like to buy it's things. It's difficult, souvenirs. isn't it? Traveling is difficult, which is why yeah. I have a chapter in the book on the COVID-19 situation, the pandemic, and how that changed. We've, we've done shows on the spending habits during COVID. Yeah, um, yeah. I've, I put a chapter in and how it affects the spending window and how it ha affects intermittent spending because I think it's helped a lot of people be a yeah. little bit more aware of what they're doing. It helped doing. my wife and I, honestly. With the exception of ordering records online, uh, we, we're spending less. Now, if you, if you, now that's a big thing, ordering online. How do you do that? There could be a system where you add it to your cart. I don't know where you get your records, Electric Fetus, wherever you go online, Amazon. Sure. So uh, uh, different places. Yeah. Discogs and electric fetus, Amazon. What yeah. if you went and ordered it 
instead of buying it, you, um, I bet you, you have your, your, your credit card already in the system. So all you have to do is, oh click. yeah. If you yeah. deleted that, <laughs> deleted that, and then just put it in your cart and said, I will buy this on my, during my window. Mm-hmm. And you went back during your window. Do you think you still buy it? Do you think there might be a little hesitation? There'd probably be some hesitations. I wouldn't buy everything if I waited. See, so yeah. you could see how this can really impact. And the, the goal is not to eliminate spending altogether. And, and one of the main things that people say to me when I approach them about this topic, and I've been talking about it for over a year, and we've been writing this book and putting it together. And some of the feedback that I get, usually the first feedback is, oh, intermittent spending. Oh, you're going to have, uh, I can only spend on, on every other day. Um, I'll just spend more on those days that I can. It's going to be like floodgates are open, you know, so I'm just delaying the spending. I'm going to spend, I might even spend more, you know, it's like the kids that say, you know, you don't, don't let your son or daughter do anything, eat sugar cereals, smoke, drink, or do anything until they get in college. But, and if you do that, if you keep them in a bubble, when they go to college, they're going to go crazy, you know? Oh yeah. They're going to go nuts. See, but I don't know if I believe that Mm. if you teach good spending habits or you teach good habits yeah, in life. I'm more on the side if you teach the good spending habits, it'll carry through life. But what do you do for someone your age, Tony, or my age that's been spending the way they've been spending their whole life? Um, now you're gonna, now I'm telling you, you can only spend during the weekends. What yeah, would that's you do harder. during the week? That's harder. But what's the hardest part about it? If I told you, Tony, all right, you, you got this weekend to prepare, you cannot spend it all next week. What would be, what do you think would be the most difficult challenge with that? Um, well, there are two challenges, not to overspend before that, not to overspend on the weekend, but be mm-hmm. a one, you know, you have to watch that. But then I think the biggest challenge would be, you know, the temptations that come along. It's just like my struggle with pizza, you know, it's there. So I eat it. But if I said you could just buy pizza on the weekend and mm. then you have it for the week or maybe, you know. Or oh, that's had, true. You had yeah. to buy your food on the weekend and prepare meals for the week, so this way you're not going yeah. to the supermarket during the week. Yes, that makes sense. You know, that yeah. that's probably the hardest is pre-planning, but that's what's happened. A lot of people, remember in the early parts of COVID where the supermarkets were closed, only open for certain times for certain people? Remember they had that brief interlude where seniors were able to go during certain hours? Um, think about that, like, they were having to plan or toilet paper. All right, I got to buy toilet paper now and hoard it and I won't need it for a month. You know, how's that working out by the way? (laughs) Yeah. Well, yeah. So, so overall, Tony, this concept is new. I I'm excited about it because I think it's different. It's a different take. People just don't like budgeting and it, I I think it's easier to implement and there's going to be support. We're going to have a website, the spending window.com. Spent, uh, not these, it's just going to be spendingwindow.com. And it's going to have a lot of different tips and videos. And we're going to do blog posts on it. We're going to have podcasts on it. So the idea is we're, we're going to build this over time. And hopefully people will try it. Because the only way to see if this is going to catch on and change the way people spend money is for people, more and more people to try it. We've People have been trying budgeting. It's the obviously the best way to do it. But for most people, they're just like, give me something sl- simple. You know, give me a pill, you know, like, I don't want to think, just tell me what to do. And if they create a window that works for them, that pushes them, it might actually change their life. Right. And it's, it's a life changer. I love it. So intermittent spending, I, I love this concept. And now if our listeners want to sit down with you and, and, and work out a plan for this and also look at where they're at financially, uh, to make sure they have enough in their retirement savings or in their emergency fund and, uh, you know, they're able to deal with the markets, things like that. How can they set up that consultation? Well, this is going to be interesting because I think what will happen with intermittent spending, with the spending window is people will say, I like the idea. It sounds exciting, but I don't know how to create a window. What window is good for me? Do I, Mm, do I do, do I only spend during the week? Do I not spend on weekends or do I spend only on weekends or do I go every other day or do I do like uh, an 18 hour spending fast where I only spend for, I don't know, five hours a day or six hours a day. You come up with it. Um, 
they're going to need some help with that. And hopefully some financial advisors out there, especially, you know, debt consolidators or people that are really interested in helping people get to control their finances will pick up on this and help people create their own spending window. But if you're interested in talking about it, you can go to the website. You can go to Dolphin Financial Group to connect with me. You can go to Spending Window to learn about this concept. You can call me and I'll talk you through different window ideas. You know, maybe it's going to be different for everybody, Tony. Um, it's It really will. And it, maybe it's different for spouses. Maybe each spouse has a different window. With But the bottom line is you need to realize that you want to do something. And usually that's simple because you just look at your, your bank account and say, I wish I had more uh, or I'm struggling to make ends meet. How do I change things up. And this might be the solution. So the call, the number to call 888-508-5935. Keep out, uh, keep a lookout for, or sign up for the newsletter at dolphinfinancialgroup.com. I will send a blast email when the book is available on Amazon. I'm going to have it on Amazon. You'll be able to buy the ebook, Tony, because I know you don't like paperback anymore. You know, you <laughs> I, I'll do, I do all three. I do save the trees. I do paperbacks, I do ebooks, and I do mainly audiobooks these days. And we'll have to get it. I know we're going to do a series, an audio series for your book. I think that's a great idea. Oh, Tony, you hear that, listeners? Tony's Golden Pipes. We'll yeah. be talking about the spending window. Yeah. So, and, and is that the name of the book, The Spending Window? Yes, that's the name of the book. And it's, when does it come out? It's going to be coming out at the end of um, November 2020. And the idea is, I was thinking, that it might be a great way to celebrate No Spend Friday. Instead of Black Friday, where everyone goes out and spends money, let's celebrate No Spend Friday. Well, actually, wow, you spend, I love that. You only spend a, a couple of bucks for the book. That's 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 the only thing. <laughs> there you, you go. Well, uh, Dan, I predict that this book is going to be a bestseller and that this concept is really going to take off. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Uh, it's a great idea. Uh, the spending window. So a great show today, a little teaser into what the spending window and intermittent spending is all about. Uh, great show today, Dan. Give the listeners that phone number and web address one more time before we go. It's dolphinfinancialgroup.com. You can go to spendingwindow.com or just give me a call, 888-508-5935. Thanks for a good show, Tony. And Tony, don't think you're going to get away without actually creating the spending window. You and I are going to have a spending challenge. I don't know if it's going to be in 2020. because well, I'm, it's I'm a crazy ready for year. that $500, so that's, uh, yeah, I'll do that challenge. I lost you there. You <laughs> broke up. I, 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 all right, listeners, we'll catch up next time. Tony, see you later. The topics on this show are wide-ranging, yet relevant to people approaching or living in retirement, like me. If there is a topic you want to hear on the show, Head to dolphinfinancialgroup.com and contact Dan to request your topic or to share your opinion. Dan Mundo or Dolphin Financial Group are not affiliated or endorsed by Social Security or any government agency. Everything discussed on today's show was for informational purpose only. Since everyone's situation is different, some things may not apply to you. The materials presented are believed to be from reliable sources. We cannot be 100% certain that they are accurate. You should really talk to my dad or someone from Dolphin Financial Group before trying to implement these ideas or strategies.